start the classes and then things come up, they can't make it to class. You know, driving from here to Bridgeport is a pain in the ass. Actually, driving from here to Valhalla is much easier. Much, much easier driving from here to Bridgeport at well, night. Driving from here to Norwalk is tough. Yeah. So, you know, but, but we're trying some different things. We, we thought we'd try something different based on the fact that a lot of people self-study and just need some help. Yes? You had mentioned that you can transmit files or append files to these transmissions. Can you append JPEGs and Word files to something like that? The, this is not great for binary files. JPEG is a binary file. It will send it, but it's going to be awfully slow, really slow. So, for example, if you want to send a spreadsheet, it's best to dump the spreadsheet as a CSV file. You know, you know what that is, right? Mm -hmm. um, send it, and then you can bring it back into into your spreadsheet program. Um, that's that's the one downside. They're working on some things that'll be better for for that. Yes. How about sending pictures? Huh? That's what I just said. No, he asked about a JPEG. It's oh, not okay. great for sending binary it's files. It's not impossible. It's no, just it's just slow. slow. It's going to be real slow. Yeah, we do like to keep binary. We do like to keep any of these digital stuff off of repeaters, because repeaters are built with the idea that it's going to be you know 30 second transmissions, and then the then the repeater will get a rest, you know a couple of seconds of rest and a 30 second transmission. And these things can go for 5, 10, 15, and you know, if you're sending a big file, you can be transmitting for 30, 40 minutes, and repeaters don't like that. Plus, of course, repeater timeouts get in the way, and it's, it, it gets ugly. So you want to keep them off repeaters. So you're, talk, you're saying they've got a high-duty cycle? Yes. These are. Does that affect the type of uh, radio that you'd be using? Uh, it affects the type of radio or it affects the power you're going to use. Mostly when you're doing any of these digital modes, you're going to keep your power low. It's not like the old RTT wire where you're doing 500 watts and you've got this huge thing with tubes. I don't know if any, for those of you who are old timers, enough to remember that. Um, mostly, most of this stuff you send at 30 watts, 20 watts, 10 watts. What you do is you take a typical 100 watt grid, both of those are 100 watt rigs, and you tune them down to 10 watts, 15, 20 watts. That's all you need. Okay, like CW, that's all you need because all you're doing is sending pure tones. It's not like human voice, which has lots and lots of tones in it and, and none of them are very strong. It's just pure tones, very, very sharp. Uh, I think I've told a lot of people my very first time on PSK, five watts, Tanzania. I'm sorry, uh, Tasmania. So an HT would would be sufficient. An HT would be sufficient, but again, high duty cycle HTs can't are not built yeah, for high duty cycle. I was just going to raise that point. I, uh, an HT doesn't have a duty cycle. Plus, it's FM. Would be very good. Well, you, huh? And it's FM. Well, yeah, that's the problem. It's FM. Okay, what you're doing uh, on digital modes, you're sending sideband, even though it's down in the in the uh, CW portion of the bands, which is really stupid. Um, but it's you're sending sideband. And the thing is, you're sending continuous duty. When manufacturers rate a radio at 100 watts, they're figuring that human voice doesn't peak more than 30% of the time. In fact, usually less than that. So they're giving you a radio that can really handle 30 watts or 40 watts continuous, and they're saying it's a 100 watt radio because they know you're not gonna be driving it continuously. Same thing with CW. When you're sending Morse code, about one third of the time, you're not actually sending. It's time when you're, you know, when the key is up, so they can rate it at 100 watts. These things are actually driving the rig for 85 to 100 percent of the time. If you try to drive the rig at 100 watts for 85 to 100 percent of the time, and it's a 100 watt rig, you're going to burn it out. So you 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 lower the power, you lower your power down to you know 30 watts. But that's all you need. Well, if you recall. When I was setting up my uh, PSK31 station, you and I worked. I was sending to you, and you were telling me how it sounded. And this guy kept on interrupting and calling me and calling me and calling me, and I just ignored him. So finally, I looked at it. With five watts, this was a guy in Italy calling me. 
But of course, with that, I didn't know how to get back to him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he was just doing his first transmission, and somebody's calling him from Italy. You know, yeah, he was at five yeah. watts. Yeah. On 75 meters. So, yeah. I, uh, you don't need much power. It, it really is phenomenal. Because if you just, the few times I'm really on the air, I go on the PSK 31. And I mean, it's just like rolling in fish. I mean, there's, there's all these signals out there. You know, on uh, what that, 20 meters, 15, 20 meter, I guess I'm on 15 meters, yeah. No, 20 meters. And, and it's just so easy, and I'm in a really poor location. I have a vertical antenna, I got a hill behind me so I can see Europe, but I can't see the rest of the, the country. And, and it's just these attack. Italy, all of Europe is just like talking next door on the digital. So if you guys haven't tried it, in that little box, the signal link, that, yeah, which you told me to buy, it works really well. They have mods for that little interface to your computer. That's the interface from the computer and radio. Every transmitter type. So you buy little specific cables and there's a little plug-in that switches everything properly. And if you buy that, it's, it's like really, really nice. It's much, much better than the uh, the one from West Mountain, the rig runner. <laughs> it is. Oh no, well they don't, Dan doesn't own West Mountain right. anymore, so we can not, say that. Uh, in Norwalk anymore, right? So yeah. they're not our neighbors. Signal Link is one of the big names. West Mountain Radio, the Rig Blasters are another big name. Um, the, the Signal Link has its own built-in sound card. So you know exactly what you're getting. It's set for this stuff. If you use the Rig Blaster, you're using the sound card that's in your computer. You know, could be a problem, could be wonderful. Depends on how old your computer is, depends on how good your sound card is. One of the problems with using the Rig Blaster always is that since you're using the same sound card that's used to play your Windows sounds, you never know when Windows is going to decide to send out a sound and all of a sudden, you know, the Windows Steam comes, comes, comes out or, you know, or something like that. And, John's had a little experience with that with his Echo Link station. Yeah, well, I have a signal link, but that comes over. Oh, okay. Uh, then I know what you. Uh, I'll help you fix that. Um, but it, it's you know it's it's funny because you can hear people sometimes. You'll tune around and you hear a YouTube video playing, and what happened is somebody's forgotten the fact that he's got his big blaster <laughs> turned on. <laughs> you know. There was a story on the uh, ICOM Java group about that happening. Yeah. <laughs> not hand related. Not hand related. <laughs> That's right. Not that, uh, yeah. Correct. So. All right. This is in this is FL Digi and NBEMS. Um, FL Digi, you know, try the digital stuff. We did the boot camp. I've still got the material. We can help. There are lots of people who can help you get on. It's fun stuff. The big complaint that everybody has about digital QSOs is that all too many people just do the QSO as, you know, hello, here's your RST name, name and address, and bye. Uh, yeah, and there's nothing you can do about it. You see, I find the same thing in sideband. You know, people go, yeah, you know, name and address, 73s, here's my, Q, here's my QSL information, and bye. You will find people who will get into a nice chat. Then again, you won't. I, and my favorite is this guy, this old guy up in, um, in Massachusetts, Woburn or Worcester, no, Woburn. He was in the Merchant Marine during World War II, and he's got all these stories of what it was like. He had three ships sunk underneath him. Um, and, and a couple of us started recording his stories. We put them together at the end. I mean, as they're coming across the screen, you can record it. You know, save it to a file. We saved the file, we cleaned them up, we put them together, we gave them back to him, and he gave them to uh, some university that has a program of you know, history information. They invited him down there. He was down in Virginia. They flew him down there. Oh, the guy was so excited. His wife was, oh my God, he's, you know, so happy he's been. Um, and, and it was great. It was a lot of fun. I had some incredible, interesting stories about him being bombed by German bombers, you know, strafe, things like that, life rafts. Incredible. And there's some very interesting people. The other day I was talking to the guy who's the senior VP of research for um, uh, our, uh, RIM, the, the people who make the blackberries. And he was talking about some new stuff that's, you know, 20 years out, which is sending radio without radio waves. 
and has to do with quant some quantum physics stuff, and he was, you know, yes. talking about, <coughs> huh? Quantum entanglement. Yes, exactly. Quantum entanglement, yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. Okay, anyway. Um, I do want to show you the a little bit of wind link, this wind more stuff. Should we take a break first? Yes. Okay, break first. <laughs>